So I just watched a show that's still running. This is a first impression video of a, an anime on Crunchyroll called "To the Abandoned To the Abandoned Sacred Beasts," and it's a wartime show. So I'll basically explain it to you. So. In the first episode, you get a little backstory, and basically there's a war going on between North and South over this new energy source, which they don't really talk a whole bunch about. They just kind of say there's this new energy source, and then you, you get to the battlefield, and then, what was it, the North, I guess, was about to lose, and I think, yeah, I think it was the North I was about to lose. And um, so they developed these uh, people into beasts, these super OP like literally they're beasts like there's a fucking dragon the minotaur thing a spider lady a fucking siren like kind of like these weird mythical chimera is which I'm not talking about like an actual chimera but basically a chimera is a bunch of animals mixed together to create a new creature so kind of like that and um they uh they end up you know winning but you know and, uh, you know, the war, they, both sides make up, you know, make up whatever. And, uh, you know, form a peace treaty and whatever shit. And the, the beasts, you know, well, the war's, the, uh, the war's not quite over at this time. But, uh, you find out there's side effects to their powers and they start going insane and so the captain Hank who is our main character makes a promise with everyone because they there's no cure that they know of no matter what this girl Lane who's she helped create them does she she can't stop whatever the, the fuck it this is um and so he makes a promise that you know should they go insane he'll uh Basically, they'll kill their own. They won't let them lose their minds. They'll kill them. So they won't be a threat to others or to themselves, essentially. And, uh, basically, I will spoil the first episode. Um, so he makes that, and then he makes a promise to everyone, you know, hey, after the war. And we have peace. You know what? I'm going to ask Elaine out or whatever. So he goes to meet her and she fucking shoots him. Because she can't do anything. So she thinks it's her responsibility to kill everyone. And she enlists Kane's help who is... Let's see, what was it? Hank is the captain and like Kane's the vice captain. Well, he shoots Elaine in front of uh, Hank. And Hank somehow survives this special bullet that's meant to, to kill them. But Elaine dies. And so Hank wakes, wakes up from a coma a couple months later. And, uh, he decided... Basically what happened is Kane killed Elaine. Hank went into a coma and Kane released the beasts, essentially, the others. Not all of them have gone quite insane yet. But you could tell over time they started to go. Like, um... A couple may not have lost their minds immediately, but, like, they lost their human forms. Like, you see, uh, one of the guys who's, uh, oh, excuse me, was, uh, uh, not, he's not a priest or something, but he, he worked, he lives at a church and he has a daughter named Xiao, who becomes a character in the story that's important. Uh, like, he loses his human form, and then you can tell he starts you could tell he's on the verge of going insane because well he's not really he doesn't say anything he's in his his form he's kind of like this dragon type thing he's there's no real humanness about him anymore and but you could tell he's he's still functioning but you can tell like there's a little part where he starts screaming in the middle of the night and then they come ne the neighbors come the next day and say hey like some fucking cows disappeared or sheep or whatever the fuck it is and like we don't know it's him but like they don't attack him or anything luckily but Basically, uh, he goes off in the middle of the woods, and then she hears a huge 
fucking explosion goes off and she finds Hank in the middle of the woods and he's just killed her father. And so while she just tries to kill him at first, she ends up following Hank around to figure out why the fuck her dad had to die. And she learns, oh, it's because, it's not because he's some asshole that hates them or something. No, he's actually their captain. He's also an incarnate. That's what they're called, incarnates. And he's basically going around and killing the others because they've all gone insane. Like others, it's kind of like there's two kinds of insane. There's ones like they just kind of acting and they're not really aware of what they're doing. And then there's the others where you can like you actually see them go insane to the like they're not rational anymore. Like um, one of the episodes later on, a couple of, there's, there's six episodes out so far, and I just finished watching the sixth one where he you know one of them is Minotaur, and he was a cowardly type of person, and so he told him okay well, I'm scared too, because this is during World War time. Before all this happens, he goes, you know, I'm scared too, but, you know, I always make, I always prepare to make myself feel better, that I've done everything I can kind of thing. So uh, he started to go and say in this Minotaur. And they go to a town, they track him down, and he's building a fort, a giant fucking fortress, sorry, out of, the, like, this shit in people's houses. So he's, like, destroying their houses and making this fort with the materials and he's rambling about this enemy that's gonna come and he's Hank shows people what anyway well, they're always around me and so basically what Hank does is he's like you're right I'm your enemy so basically this guy is going insane and he's his kind of the equivalent is when is the anvil gonna drop so Hank is basically like I'm the anvil and then you know he's about to die so He's no longer afraid because well, it's already happened. Does that make sense? Like, have you ever dreaded something so much and then it happens and you're like, <sighs> like there's kind of that relief? It's basically kind of what, it, what Hank does for him. Is you don't have to be scared anymore. It's already happened. You don't have to worry about anything anymore. And it's, it's very fucking sad because Hank isn't... Like, you know this has a huge toll on him. But he's not one of the, like, I'm going to save the world. People Like, no, he's aware he's killing people. He's aware it's not the right choice. But there is no right choice. And this is the only thing he can do for them and for the people. Because they're becoming a danger to other people. Because they're, they're literally going insane. Like, these were all people who... A lot of them didn't want to hurt anyone. Or had no reason to hurt anyone. Like, but they've slowly, like discard to go mad some just completely mad but there's there's no reason others were like they've like some are looting houses like this one dude you like it's just this is kind of slightly different type of insanity you have this like more humanoid version where it's like a nutcase and you know they're crazy and then you have like the rabid animal kind basically like there's it's hard to explain but there's the kind that's like basically when I say rabbit animal I don't mean like literally rabbit animal but you know where like they're not really aware of what they're doing anymore they're not thinking they're just kind of doing and then you have the, the others that kind of have a thought process but clearly it's they've gone a little nuts you know so that's basically the show is you know deal with them and of course Kane is our antagonist He's, uh, he wants to create a new nation, we just found out. He basically is, well, why do we have to die? Like, what's wrong with it? You know, say old shit, you know, military. It does secret fucking experiment. And then they don't need them anymore, so they try and get rid of them because they're a threat or whatever. And then, of course, they're like, why the fuck should we die? We fought for you, fuck you, we're attacking you now. One of those things. But, um... I mean, it's a lot more interesting than make a sound. But I, I'm really into this. Like, it makes me cry a lot because, like, oh, God. Like, just imagining all the bullshit that like, Hank is feeling. Because he likes these people. He he really cared about these people. He didn't just, like, have one or two conversations with them. Like, they were kind of a family. Like, you could tell they didn't know each other for long, but they were a fucking family. They were good friends. And he has to see them go insane to the point... 
they're not the people he knows anymore. Like the very worst version of themselves. Like you know how there's a person that's a little bit afraid, and you're like, okay, they're a little cowardly, and there's that lose another person comes like a super lunatic, and like they're so afraid someone's gonna get them, they'll get everyone else before they get them. Like it's kind of that level of crazy. Like it just it it turns it up to like eleven, and he has to track them down and kill them. And you know we got Kane in the picture, and he's like I fucking knew it because like. Hold on. Uh, anyway, I don't want to spoil too much, but just it, it's really good. It's on Crunchyroll, six episodes so far. To the abandoned sacred beasts. Just, uh, there's one thing I'm gonna add. When I saw Hank and his haircut, my first thought was totally Wolverine from the X Men. Just I don't know what it is, but the haircut. But they chose that for that man, and of course he is, in fact, f- it's so much worse when you find out what he is, where you're just like, mm, really, dude? Like, I can't tell you're doing this on purpose, or this is just a funny coincidence. But yeah, you, like, you find out what Hank is, and of course you find out what Kane is, and it was just like, once I found out what Hank was, and I found out Kane is going to be the antagonist, I'm just like, I know what you are, motherfucker. And I was right, I knew exactly what he was, too. Like, you see the others, and they're, like, beast forms or whatever. But you... You do get to see Hanks eventually. But you don't get to hear what Kane is until later. But there's one scene where you're just like, dude, I... I so know what this is gonna be, and I turned out to be right. But... It's just totally worth a watch. Like I said, there's only six episodes so far, but it's really good. Try it.